Hello AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School. In our second video devoted to the conglomerate of topics 2.2 to 2.3 that pretty much cover the definition of the derivative. And in this video, we're actually gonna take a look at our first full example. So you may have noticed that in the first video, we talked about the development of this derivative function f prime, this very powerful limit statement that will allow us to compute the tangent line or the slope of should say of the tangent line drawn to a curve and you're going to see how important it is to know that information with the upcoming topics that we're going to learn so we have this working definition up here in the blue box and we see our example one that asks us to differentiate f of x equal the square root of x and determine the domain of f prime so the very first thing that we're going to do is we are going to assemble this function. We know that this function is denoted by f prime of x. It is called the derivative function. And it starts off with this limit statement. You can use either the h or the delta x notation. Most students are going to prefer to use the h. As I said before, that's the more common one seen on the AP exam. And then the part that might be a little tricky is right at the very beginning. We are supposed to evaluate this f of x plus h. And for students that have trouble with this, and I have encountered a lot of students that do have a little bit of trouble just setting the thing up, maybe I would offer you this little process here to the right. Step one, basically find your function f, which right here it is, square root of x, and figure out what is that function if we were to replace that x with x plus h? Just do this work off to the side. So you go into this function, square root of x, and we replace anything inside of it, the x that was inside of it, by x plus h. That's what f of x plus h is. Go in, replace your x with x plus h. If the stuff inside of these parentheses was the word monkey, you would replace this x with the word monkey, and you have square root of monkey. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense mathematically, but it's the same idea. So you are going to replace this first part of the numerator with square root of x plus h. All right. Now, the next step, and this might seem kind of silly because there really isn't much to do here. But the top says you're now supposed to take f of x plus h minus f of x, according to the formula. Well, in this particular case, we already computed the f of x plus h, which is square root of x plus h. Subtracting the original f of x is just the original square root of x that we see here. So you just finish off this numerator with that. Okay? And then the denominator is just simply h. So a lot of you may not need that step on one and step two off to the side if you can assemble this on the fly, and that's perfectly okay. But I like to talk through students the, the process to really properly obtain that numerator. Now, depending on how much work and effort you put forth in the first unit, will really determine in large how you guys are going to be able to solve this particular limit. You have to recognize that you cannot plug 0 in for h. This is not what we call at our school a green light limit, where you can just directly substitute h out and put 0 in. Because if we try that, we would get square root of x minus square root of x, which is 0, over, of course, 0. And that's an indeterminate form. So we have to work harder. How do you work harder for problems like this that have square roots in them? The answer is multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate. So that information is coming back. We thought we could shake that. We thought we were over it, but it's still here. So here's our conjugate. This just means that we're doing a perfectly legal maneuver. We're multiplying the top and the bottom by the same expression. I often will like to put the quantities here in parentheses so that I can really see what's being multiplied. And that's where we are that's where we are next. We are doing some multiplying. We are doing some foiling. We have to foil this numerator. So we have our fraction bar 
and we start thinking about, okay, if we take the first term multiplied by the first term, well, that's just the square root of x plus h times the square root of x plus h, which is just what's inside that square root. Not too bad. Now, the middle terms are even better. If you recall, whenever you multiply conjugates together, the insides and the outsides are going to cancel with one another, and that's always going to be the case. So the only thing left to do here is the last times the last, which is square root of x times square root of x, but one's negative and one's positive, of course. So that would give us a negative and then just a plain old x at the end. The denominator should be even easier. As we instructed you to do in unit one, don't multiply the h through. Just write them, make them look like they're going to be multiplied because you want this h out in front so that he is what I call exposed. You want that h there so that he can cancel. Because let's let's face it, this h is what's causing the problems, right? We can't let this h be zero because it's going to wipe out the entire denominator. At this point, I'm going to work horizontally here. You probably see some cancellations in the numerator that takes place. You see that these two x's are going to cancel. So I'm going to have you guys go ahead and do that. And then to save a step, you should see now that these h's are going to cancel, the h in the numerator with the h that was in the denominator. Now be careful because that means that you have a 1 in the numerator. I oftentimes see students want to put a 0 there, and that's not correct. So we have the denominator as the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. That's all that's left there now after that h is canceled. And lo and behold, now you will notice that you can plug 0 in for h. You can green light. Upon doing so, you get 1 over the square root of x plus the square root of x. And if you do simplify that, let's say you want to have it match a nice multiple choice, you'd have 1 over 2 square root of x. And that is your result. I want to make a comment about the fact that I know that some students come into a calculus class and you have a background maybe that allowed you to take derivatives in your pre-calculus class, or maybe you're taking advanced placement physics concurrently, and you might know these wonderful shortcuts to the derivative. And that's great. That's a big part of calculus that we're going to talk about later. But for right now, you have to be comfortable with knowing the structure of this definition of derivative. If you're asked to take a derivative at this point in the unit, it, you will have to use the definition and points would be awarded for, for certainly doing so and not taking that shortcut. We're going to take a look at a couple of more videos at least with this particular uh, topic and uh, kind of segue into some more use of the definition of derivative and then get into the nitty gritty of the topic 2.4 which is when you can determine when a function doesn't have a derivative. Make sure you tune in for those videos. Until then, We'll see you later.